Hi, I'm Steve Nathans Kelly, editor of Streaming Media Producer. This week I had the opportunity to speak with Matt Taylor and Akumi Yoshimatsu, who are respectively the producer and host of a new hit Japanese quiz show called Kizuna. Matt and Akumi have been in the business a while, successfully producing shows on Hollywood sets and on location. But like so many of us who are living under quarantine these days, Matt and Akumi are doing things a little differently, producing Kizuna from the bedroom of their Tokyo apartment. We've been, you know, in this room for 10 weeks now. Um, and, and, you know, we're, you, you know, we have, we have a wonderful relationship and if we didn't, then we'd be in trouble. But, uh, you know, we work, we work on this thing. We started uh, doing the show um, about four weeks ago and it was just kind of something where we needed something to do. We wanted people especially here in Japan, you know, to have something to do um, because everybody was, you know, in Japan, it's a little bit different than quarantining in the U S you know, where, where most people, they either have a, a very nice size apartment or they have a nice size home with a yard and they can go out and do what they want, you know, things like that here in Japan, you know, it's, you know, a lot of people, they're in a, they're in a, a one room apartment. And when I say room in the U S it'd be more like a studio apartment. And the studio space, the size um, is probably about 10 feet by, probably about 10 by eight is the average living space, you know, for Japanese in Tokyo. It's a different kind of experience. So we really wanted to make something for them that, you know, they could interact with other people with, they could interact with Ikumi, um, you know, through the, the chat mechanism. And we'll talk about, you know, the whole back end and everything else, but that was kind of the thing. And so, you know, we've, we've been locked in the room between trying to figure out how to do this um, and then actually executing it uh, for 10 weeks now. So and tell me a little bit just about the concept of the show itself. Sure. Well, the concept of the show, you know, we, we've been involved in various quiz shows in the U.S. and throughout, throughout the world. And the biggest show that we had in terms of ratings, the most successful, was when um, Ikumi on live on camera would start to interact a lot with the comments in real time. Um, she would catch things, you know, like somebody's in the hospital, they're playing from the hospital, and she would reach out to them through, you know, right there, live on camera, and talk to them and wish them well and things like that. You know, they're having a baby, they're doing a birthday, she would have the entire crew in the whole studio yell, you know, happy birthday, you know, and things like that. So she really began to interact with, with viewers and with players beyond the game. And so we had realized that that is really the winning element that brings the numbers to the game. And so what we wanted to do was we wanted to put together a show that consists of a talk show element with interesting guests or, or even just, you know, introducing world topics, you know, that people maybe you're not familiar with, but they're of interest. And then after that, do the quiz and do the quiz component of the show um, with the questions based on what you just saw in the uh, interview segment. So what we were able to do, and if we were able to call this like a beta test rollout or something much bigger, you know, that we've been doing, you know, from our bedroom, right? We've realized that the engagement uh, is a hundred percent. Everybody who starts watching the show because they know at the end, you know, it's kind of like your, your class, you know, okay, okay, kids, there's going to be a quiz at the end, right? People pay attention. And of course the interviews are, are fun. Um, they're meaningful and, uh, you know, they're, they're unique. And then afterwards, you know, if you, as long as you've watched the interview, if you're quick, you know, with, with typing in your answers in the comments section, which is something that hasn't, has never been done in Japan before, um, then, you know, you can be in the top three and maybe you can win. And the top three winners, we send out care packages. So, you know, Ikumi through her, you know, she's a Hollywood actress. She's the first Miss Japan ever to win the world title of Miss International. 
So she has, you know, a, a lot of sponsors and a lot of companies that, that uh, you know, give her products and things like that. So we're able to put together really nice care packages for, for people who win. And so over the past, you know, four weeks, we've improvised. You know, sometimes we've sent them chocolate uh, along with, you know, uh, body and face and health care things. Uh, we've thrown in rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> you know, um, we, we, we've done things that, that we felt could be helpful, you know, for people. Sure. And the, the love and the comments and the gratitude that we've received from doing this show um, have really been overwhelming. They, they've really been moving for us. And it, it, it's really made the whole thing worthwhile. And so we realized that we've made more than just a new quiz show that you don't need to download an app for. Everyone can participate just by going to YouTube. Um, and then you write the answers right in the comments and our backend server reads, you know, the answers and it tallies up the winners and it generates, you know, winners list, you know, for every question and then a grand winners list at the end of the, at, at the end of the game. And so, you know, we, we realized that this is really something that has been able to bring people together and, Give them a little bit of light, you know, um, when they're sitting inside their apartment that's literally the size of Matchbox over here. And so how many shows have you done so far? Um, we've done about 10 shows okay. so far. And um, we have a combination. And so we'll do one show that has the quiz element at the end. That's called the, the, the Quizna. And Kizuna is, is a formulation of two words. It's quiz and then Kizuna in Japanese. Kizuna means to come together and bond as one. And so we call it Kizuna. So we do the Kizuna show. And then the next day, the following day, we have something called Kizuna no Kai or uh, uh, Kizuna no Kai. So it means uh, a forum. It's like a forum. So it's basically, we talk about the, the show that we did the day before we go through the questions we go through the people who got it the people who missed it you know we go through the comments we talk about it we laugh we have fun and also additional information. yeah and we give inf you know, more information about uh quiz. yeah little factoids about each question you know and things like that back end stuff and so we have probably um about i would say 60 percent of the people, the number of people who actually play Quizna come back the following day and participate from beginning to end uh, in, the, in the forum show that we do. So it's really, it really proves that, you know, we've been able to generate a community atmosphere for people. And so, you know, they just come back and they participate and they have a lot of fun. It's, it's been great. And so, so both of you have been in these respective roles before. I mean, this is a new format and a new concept, but you've been producer and host before. Is that, is that right? Yeah, we were hired to launch a show uh, in the U.S. called Cash Show, which was the big competitor for HQ. Um, and so we launched Cash Show uh, here in Asia, you know, from San Francisco, actually. We did two shows a day from there. And... The format, you know, of, of HQ as well was very bland. You know, it was basically a green screen. And you have this big purple blob, you know, behind you. And, you know, it was, it was very, uh, very straightforward, very generic. And what we did with our shows at Cash Show is I started to bring in different elements like, you know, 3D elements and you know, fly-ins and guests and, you know, things like that, that the other shows weren't doing, you know, in, in the other countries. And so ours exploded and it, you know, it went, um, went through the roof, you know, in terms of participants and growth and everything else. And they handed the show off to a Japanese studio after our contract, you know, after we got the show going and our contract had ended, you know, the plan was to hand it off to a Japanese studio. And the Japanese studio basically went back to the old format very bland, the big purple monster behind you. And, you know, they'd have, they'd have, you know, girls dressed, dressed up like 12 year olds and, you know, the typical Japanese thing. Right. Um, and they crashed. So, you know, having a more intellectual format with an intellectual host 
um, able to communicate with people, you know, through the, through the chat and through the live chat and things like that, communicating with them on camera, we knew was the best way to go about doing it. So by adding the more intelligent component, which is the interview portion and introducing people to people throughout the world, you know, we had the general manager of, of the biggest, you know, the greatest beach resort on the planet, you know, the Waldorf Astoria in Dubai you know, and introducing, you know, the world's largest royal suite, you know, and things like that. So, which is a great way to take your mind off of being cooped up in a room, right? right. We can take people to the beaches in Dubai and, and we had a great time. And so we've been really creative with our guests, you know, um, and, and bringing, bringing out elements that people would normally not be able to see and participate in. So we've had a lot of success with it. And now, it's funny because, you know, we've only been doing this now for four weeks or so. We've been doing it, you know, we haven't left our house and we've suddenly been getting calls from sponsors and, you know, big companies wanting to get involved in the show, which we kind of started as, as a, literally a bedroom hobby, something we could do during lockdown, you know, to, to bring a little light to people's lives, you know, and, and to, to lighten things up a little bit. And it's turned out, you know, to be, quite interesting. So we'll see what happens from here. Let's talk a little bit about, um, about the remote production and, and how you're doing it. I mean, I'm guessing this is the first time you've, you've produced a show out of your bedroom. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> this is our workspace. This is how we do the show. And for some reason, this HDMI connector that I have on this, on this cell phone up here, uh -huh. it kind of, it, it goes dark, you know, every couple of seconds, but you know, you can get the idea. Um, yeah. And so this is, you know, we've got the ATEM Mini right here, the, the Mini Pro, actually, which, which we're going to give you the story about, you know, how it was so difficult to come by, uh, but we were able to get it. We literally put everything together in our house uh, to put together, you know, we, this, is, this is our bedroom, basically. Okay. Uh, so our bed is pushed off to the side. <laughs> And, and this, is our, this is our complete, this is our universe right here. And this is how we do the show. Wow. Uh, we have the monitor up here with the split screen. Ikumi sits over there on the other side and the camera is usually facing her, the mic is facing her. Um, <laughs> and that's become, that's become our studio setup. And then uh, to throw elements in, I have, um, you know, I, have a, a, I have an old MacBook Pro that was you know, sitting in the closet, hadn't been used for years. Mm -hmm. Uh, I brought that out and um, basically, you know, it, it still has Final Cut Pro on it. So I run all the elements through, you know, the insert elements through this. So, yeah, yeah so, you know, we have the inserts that we just punch into the show um, as needed. And we, you know, we have our openings, we have all the, all the clips and everything for each show. In the beginning, we realized that uh, if we wanted to do this, we're gonna need to, to have switching elements. We're gonna need to be able to have things come in and things go out. We're gonna, be able to, we're gonna wanna be able to switch live. So I started doing some research to see what was out there. I originally started with OBS and you know, OBS is great, but um, it has, you know, sometimes it's not stable and um, I wanted to find something else. We needed to get uh, an adapter uh, anyway, you know, for the camera and, and, and things like that, for the microphone and, and things to make it nice. Um, and in doing so, I discovered the Blackmagic Ada Mini. And the Ada Mini had just come out. And I told Ikumi, I said, wow, we really need to get one of these. It's only $275. And which is basically the amount of a, you know, a camera adapter, right? And so, and we can, we can switch the show. It has four HDMI inputs, it has two mic inputs. Um, we can do picture in picture all through this one little portable unit. So Ikumi was absolutely agreeable. She said, yes, let's go get it. Well, everybody in the world at that time was confined to their room and people who were doing big shows on television suddenly needed switchers so that they could, you know, come to you from their room. 
and um, especially in Japan as well, all the celebrities were doing, you know, YouTube shows. It's, it all became a streaming platform. And so nowhere on the planet could we find an ATIM Mini, all right? <clears throat> it started popping up on some of the online shops, you know, um, here in Japan for about three times the price. And then, you know, for about 900 bucks, you know, one would pop up here and there. And, you know, we're in our room, our project had been canceled, you know, mid shoot. We don't know what's going to go on. I think, man, 900 bucks, that's, that's a big spin, right? But we were just ready to pull the trigger when the A2 Mini Pro came out. And I watched the, the release on the A2 Mini Pro and I said, wow. So now with the A2 Mini Pro, we can actually have split screen on a monitor um, we can actually push things out live through the Atom Mini Pro. And that's a huge advantage for us in terms of stability, uh, options for the show, just being able to see the split screen and do things live. I can add more elements and you know, more better timing. And so we decided, to, um, we decided to wait a little bit on the Atom Mini. But obviously, I mean, literally, I called Europe, I called the US, I called Singapore, I called China, I called everybody, tried to reach the, the OEM factory that might be manufacturing it. And, and we absolutely could not get our hands on one. Suddenly, Ikumi found a shop online in Japan and she was kind of, she said, wow. She said, now they're up to like 1200 bucks. And I was shaking my head. I was going, God, what are we gonna do? And then she said, wait a minute, it says Atom Mini Pro. <laughs> wait a minute, show me that. And sure enough, it said Atom Mini Pro. And I, I kind of couldn't believe it, but immediately, you know, she pushed the button. So she, pushed, she pushed the buy button. And so we were literally, uh, we couldn't sleep for three days while it was coming to us. And, you know, the, the doorbell rang and we put our mask and gloves on and everything and we went out, you know, we got the box. And we opened up the box and it was an A2 Mini Pro. The first and the last that we've ever seen come online in Japan to this point. Um, and so we were just, we, we were ecstatic. And I set everything up, cameras that wouldn't work with other adapters, you plug them in, everything worked. It just works. It is the most, it, you know, there, it's beyond description. And within, literally from getting the box and then re-engineering the back end so that you know it would pick up the comments from youtube and everything else we went to air 10 days later 10 days after getting the a2 mini pro we were able to go to air with a show with a multi-camera switch show um with different elements you know flowing in using uh the uh, uh the media portion of the atom software control combined with basically the laptop in the other H HDMI connection, which we use kind of like a hyperlink. It's actually better than having a hyperlink. I shouldn't say that, but it, it is because, you know, you can, you can work on the fly. It all comes out through one of the uh, uh, HDMI inputs onto the back of the Atom Mini Pro, and you can switch it out live. So it, it's a great solution. Blackmagic Design has always been there for very reputable, reputable and uh, consistently good hardware solutions, right? At a reasonable, reasonable price point. My first introduction to Blackmagic was back in like 2003, 2004. I was doing my first big documentary with Martin Sheen. And I needed, um, uh, I needed a box, you know, to a capture box. And that was the first time, I think it was called the data link, the, the black magic data link, I think is what it was called. And again, it, it was a cheap solution. It worked, you know, with everything. Um, it's kind of like, you know, the reason why a lot of people go with Apple products is because it's all plug and play. It plugs in, it works. You don't need drivers, you don't need anything else. And black magic is basically the Apple of, of, our industry, you know, you plug it in and everything works and it's, it's high quality. It has uh, a level of intuitiveness 
that doesn't, you don't get with other products. Even the software control panel, you know, it's easy enough to get your head around very, very quickly. So there's somebody who wants to get into streaming or wants to do a show remotely, they can open the box, they can, they can download the control panel, the ATEM control panel, and they can be off and running literally within minutes. It's that intuitive. With Quizna, it's been such a massive success here in Japan in such a short time. We're actually gonna be rolling out the format in the US. So we're looking forward to the lockdown to go away. So and our flights to resume <clears throat> so that we can get back to LA. And even if we don't get back to LA, maybe we'll roll it out in the US right here from our bedroom in Tokyo. Um, but we're looking forward to getting this out uh, in the US as well. 